Let's turn our attention to beats per minute or BPM as it's commonly referred. Most commercially bought music CDs or digital downloads will feature a BPM for a specific class genre that is appropriate for the type of exercise contained in it. There may come examples of class structures, however, such as indoor cycling, where you're given a prescribed BPM for a particular writing profile and left to your own devices to find a suitable song that matches the movement cadence to the beats per minute. In your music mapping and BPM worksheet, directly under the last exercise, we have three songs we're about to play. Each piece of music will last for 30 seconds, and then at the end of the song, we'll double your figure to get the right BPM for each. It's typically most accurate to count out the beats over the course of a full 60 seconds. However, this will still give us a good indication of BPM. Let's see how you go. Get ready. Okay, starting now. Okay, let's take a listen now to song number two. Get ready for my cue to start. Start now. And now, let's take a listen to song number three. Getting ready to start now. In two, and one, let's go. How did you go with that exercise? Let's take a look. Okay, here are the answers. Song one was 128 beats per minute. We counted 64 beats and then doubled it to get 128. Song two was 144. We counted 72 beats per minute, doubled it to get 144. Song three was 56. We doubled it to get 112. Now, if you had any trouble, go back and repeat the exercise. The more you can hear the beat, the more you'll be able to leave that aspect of your teaching behind you and instinctively act on autopilot. When that's possible, and only when that's possible, you'll be able to fully concentrate on the finer points of your music interpretation and advanced teaching skills.